Good morning, everybody. We have a special service for you this morning that I'm super excited about. And uh, in a, a minute's time, Heather is going to come up and lead us through that. <laughs> I'll be on tiptoes all the whole service. OK, good morning, everyone. Um, it was lovely to be here today with you and our young people leading a new day service. We hope by the end you will all wish you were either aged 12 to 18, a budding youth leader, or finding any excuse to join us next year. Without further ado, I pass over to the band, who will introduce the songs we will now sing. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, so we're doing six songs today, all of which we sung at New Day. Um, four of them we do here uh, regularly, but two of them are new songs. So you know we'll play them and sing them and join in. The words will be on the screen, so join in once you get the hang of them. Um, yeah, so we're about to do a block of three songs. Uh, the first two you'll know, hopefully, uh, and the last one is a new one. Um, yeah, as I said, join in. And during the last song, I think that the kids will be leaving. So, um, no, it's fine. Yeah, so during the third song, the, the kids are leaving. They're not leaving yet, right? Yeah, during the first song. No, it's changed. Oh, it's changed. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy. Be set free. 
Next slide, please. <laughs> New Day kicked off on the Monday, the 1st of August. At 10 a.m., we met at Open Doors offices before climbing into our allotted cars and heading off to Norwich Showground, which was our home for the next five days. The journey there turned out to be one big party with us making friends with another car, singing in the top of our voices and making a video for Peter of his favourite tune, Sweet Caroline. We arrived at the showground and collected our colour-coded zone wristbands. Each church attended, attending had their own pitch, which consisted of a marquee, tents and an area to let off steam or just chill together. By joining with Open Doors, we shared one pitch and spent the week having a fabulous time. Every morning we met separately as 12 to 14s and 15 to 18s. Our speakers for the week were Martin Seagal and Dan McLeod. After the morning meeting, everyone got to choose from a seminar they wanted to go to. They ranged from true stories, youth alpha, to navigating life discussions and sex questions. As you can imagine, many discussions were had back at camp afterwards. At New Day, we participated in many sports, which were held on the field where the big top previously was. The younger youth competed in the football, and the older youth played in the dodgeball, rugby, and rounders. Throughout the day, back at camp, we would entertain ourselves by getting henna tattoos from Holly, playing volleyball with a net that belonged to the church next to us, which we tactically offered to put on our pitch as there was more space. Multiple water fights also took place that included a slip and slide and many 
filled large water containers above the heads of our youth leaders, including Heather and, much to her disgust, Holly. After all that, we certainly needed time to chill. We had an amazing selection of world-class musicians and worship leaders who led our, the morning 12 to 14 and 15 to 18 sessions, uh, as well as the evening main meeting. Uh, the morning 15 to 18 session, as well as one of the seminars and the evening main meeting, were all held on the big New Day stage, which was a change to the normal big top that they normally have at New Day, but still I felt an amazing atmosphere for worship and fellowship. Uh, the energy of the songs was amazing, got everyone up and singing, uh, and as already mentioned, all the songs we're playing today are ones we did at New Day, so a little taste of what it was like. Not quite the same, but you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, less lights. Yeah. Um, if, in the evening meeting, we had uh, many songs as well as a talk from one of the amazing preachers uh, from all over the country. Um, and the Thursday evening meeting was quite special in that we all turned up in 80s outfits. Uh, and on top of that, we got to witness an uh, amazing night of healing where hundreds of people reported being healed. Uh, the concourse was converted barns, each with different activities and themes, ranging from food stalls to book ones. At one end, there was a shed barn with a rave that went on every night with endless good music. The other end had sport activities like table tennis and basketball. One of the barns was home to the famous milkshake stall, which had hour-long queues and its own personal one, as it was so popular in the past. Another held virtual experiences for people to enjoy, while there was a massive food court selling all sorts of foods like halloumi fries, waffle cones, and more. At the end, there was a neon room, and that hosted a big bookstore filled with knowledge for those who wanted to learn more, as well as a sweet shop and a merch stall. We had our own little um, adventures of our own at New Day. For example, uh, me and a few other boys started up a little rave tent, um, and it became quite big. And um, it got so big that we had to move outside, and the church next door joined in. Um, on the last night of New Day, we took part in a photo challenge in which we had a list of specific things to take, um, take photos of that had been a centerpiece, or centerpiece almost of our time at New Day. Some included a recreation of the funniest moment from the seminars, photos of each of the zone host tents, uh, a new, and a photo with a stranger, and much more. Before we knew it, it was time to go home, and we had the enjoyment of taking down all the tents, the two marquees, um, while finding homes for all the lost property gathered over the week, while secretly trying to stick pegs on other people. With great teamwork, photos were taken. It wasn't uh, long before we were on our way to McDonald's for food and an impromptu water fight um, and ice cream fight for Holly. Um, then it was back in the car for the drive home to St. Neots to pick up our luggage from open doors. Most of us took our luggage home. However, one of our youth decided to share her luggage with everyone and still hasn't collected it at all, Morgan. <laughs> we had an amazing time at New Day, made lots of new friends and reacquainted ourselves with old ones, laughed, cried a lot, and most importantly, spent quality time with Jesus. Okay, so New Day um, 2023 is open already for bookings, and we are looking forward to heading there again next August. We hope that you, that gave you a little insight of our week, and thank you for listening. Now over to the band. Yeah, so we've got uh, two more songs now, uh, the first of which hopefully you'll know again, and the second of which is new again, so same thing again, we're going to play it and sing it and join in if you can, uh, please stand.
Please be seated. As we draw near to a time of prayer now, let us spend a few moments remembering God's words. Be still and know that I am God. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we quieten ourselves to come into your presence, we want to give praise and thanks to you for allowing us and welcoming us into your holy sanctuary. We acknowledge that you are our refuge and our rock, and we bow down to your awesome power and unrelenting love for us. You created us for your pleasure and to live in harmony with you and the world you created. May we never forget, though, that a place in your family means service to you and those who need to see and know of your gospel. You are Lord of the universe and all that is in it. As we meet this morning, we want to give special thanks to all those who serve you by going out into the world to share your story and to show your love to their discipleship, to those who do not know you yet. This can sometimes mean putting themselves in danger and having to endure persecution. Please give these special people your strength through the Holy Spirit to persevere and trust in your protection. We especially want to remember this morning, Lord, the people of Pakistan. We cannot imagine their pain and we pray that international help will reach them quickly before more lives are lost. We pray for all those on the ground in Pakistan already giving emergency relief and to the Christian charities who not only give physical relief but can also offer prayer and hope in Jesus' name to the suffering. Whilst we remember the suffering, let us not forget the people of Ukraine as we call out to Jesus to put an end to the violence and have mercy on those people. We pray for the Russian people, many of whom do not want this war and to the soldiers who were led to believe their presence there was to help stabilise the supposed political unrest. Lord, all we see is unnecessary bloodshed and misery. We ask you to show your immense power, love and mercy and reverse these unfolding humanitarian disasters. Finally, we pray for our young people today we thank you for their vigour and energy and their particular way of engaging with the world, as well as their potential and their futures. We pray for the projects and opportunities that are focused on giving young people the chance to fulfil that potential. May you bless them, sustain them and continue to inspire solutions that will give young people a future filled with hope. May you strengthen with them with joyful hearts and give them a vision of your kingdom here on earth, emboldening them to act by loving their neighbours with word and action. May this next generation continue to be filled with your Holy Spirit, passing down your truths and keeping the word of your kingdom alive. We ask all these things, Lord, in accordance with your will and to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We will now say together the special prayer for today. God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness. Increase your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now please join in praying the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Thank you. Our Bible reading today comes from John 10, verses 1 to 18, the good shepherd and his sheep. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listens to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and, le and leads them out. When he has brought out all on his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever comes through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay, my, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Okay, so um, all I can say is, wow, just listening to those words spoken in the video highlights again what an amazing God our God is. He is a good shepherd, a chosen and precious cornerstone. We are a part of his family and we all have a place in heaven with him, a place with many rooms and one with your name on it. We were asked, what would your name look like on your, on your door? Mine, well, mine would be brightly coloured with horses all over it. All we need to do is to believe and come home, come home to him. New Day was a week filled with God's love and we all felt the presence of the Holy Spirit amongst us. Throughout the week, God spoke to many of us and some of the youth would like to share their personal experiences with you now. Before New Day, I had my doubts about God and going to New Day, I felt unsure and uncertain. And it took me a couple of days, but it wasn't until we heard from a speaker called Andrew Wilson when I started to connect more with God uh, and you had a different ap approach and really made me understand God. And then I think it was that night or the night after I heard God speaking to me, telling me to go over to Molly and pray for her. So I did. It made me feel closer to God and made me very emotional. It was lots of fun. So uh, the week before New Day, I'd already been on a, a camp uh, with the other youth group I go to at the Evangelical Church. Um, and through that, I think I, I was feeling closer to God and uh, feeling definitely a connection. And then going from that to New Day, I mean, it's just two weeks full of God, full of um, fellowship and, and worship. And I think that was, that was just amazing for me, uh, feeling such a connection, uh, especially at New Day. Um, after learning lots at Sparkford, which is the first camp I went to, uh, and then learning even more at New Day and, and being around thousands of other youth who were uh, in the same situation. I mean, it was just amazing for me. So. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Holly, and I wanted to share with you mine, Morgan, and Faith's personal experiences from New Day this year. To start, we had an absolute ball along with the rest of St. Mary's youth who joined us. It, it all felt like one big family, and we loved spending the week socialising with friends, eating, taking part in water fights and playing games but most importantly, being able to worship and learn more about God. To us, we felt the connection in the evenings during prayers and songs. The evening meetings always touched us, and we loved the atmosphere of being surrounded by the Holy Spirit. As a young youth leader, it was lovely to see how Faith and Morgan connected to New Day and how the Lord worked through them and gave them confidence and love. 
after curfew when we were supposed to be completely silent. I have to say, probably not the best of timings, but this was when Morgan and Faith decided to ask questions, querying things like, what is it to be a Christian? Initially, we would chat until 3 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> until one would pass out. But from a young leader and friend perspective, this was such a proud moment for me, and I hope inspired them for times ahead. Sorry, I've got another one as well. <laughs> um, a friend of mine who can't be here today gave his heart to Jesus during New Day. God started to talk to him in the weeks before through our discuss discussions that started during a sleepover after an 18th birthday party. He told me he wanted to change and I suggested he should come to New Day. He agreed and in the weeks leading up he was coming, not coming, was coming and then was complete radio silence. We were due to pick him up, but in the end, we left a message suggesting that he should make his own way and we would see him there. A few hours after arriving, I got a text to say he was coming and we would, would meet us at the gates. He quickly settled in and made friends with everyone and as though he had known us for ages. God started to speak to him on the first night and when there was a call to respond, he jumped to his feet and shot off to the front. On Tuesday, he gave his life to Jesus. On Wednesday... Chris from Open Doors linked him up with a church from Ely near where he lives. On Thursday, he had his first Bible study and received his first Bible. On Friday, he offered to pray for a youth leader, spent time with Nick going through the Bible and in the evening service, offered to pray for one of the, and offered to pray for one of the youth leaders. Every day, we could see God talking to him and him responding, and it was totally amazing. Well, unfortunately, I didn't make it to New Day this year. And what a year to miss. <laughs> Sounded like everything happened. Um, it's just been so inspiring to hear how our youth have grown in the Lord. Um, also, but also shows you you can have an amazing time. You don't have to sit in a quiet room being all serious, which is impossible for them anyway. So um, it, it's been fantastic to hear and to hear you singing and to hear the band for the first time. Uh, amazing, and how you're all completely geared, geared up with Jesus, which is amazing. So let's keep that going. Let's keep that going through the year. Well done. So I just want to say a couple of thank yous. Heather, come here. <laughs> so Heather basically has been non-stop for months <laughs> putting this together. Every little detail. There are lots and lots of um, uh, a WhatsApp things and Heather's on do, 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 do. Oh, I've forgotten this one so it's been going on and on and on and if it wasn't for Heather this just wouldn't have happened and it wouldn't have been as good fun I'm sure you all agree with that um, down to for, sorting out the tents making sure they got the right kit raising money for drinks in the what was going to be the tent um, so thank you so much thank Heather and, and thank you also for our youth leaders yes. stepped up Holly and Sarah because they were too old, technically, to go this year. They had to become youth leaders, but I hear that was a great success. It was a very good success. It was brilliant. So thank you so much. Thank you for everyone that went and had an amazing experience and told us about it, because that's the important bit, to come back and spread it. Um, and if anyone would like to come and be part of it next year, Heather and I would be absolutely delighted. Absolutely. The more the better, that's all I say. I mean, it is full on, as you can see. So you have to sort of take some vitamin tablets before you come. But... Uh, it, it's, it's great fun, and you will experience the Holy Spirit as well. It's not just for them. Would you agree with that? Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, um, so while I'm up here, if I can sneak in a little advert for something else the youth are about to do. Um, I don't know if you remember a year ago, we did something called the Shack Challenge. Um, this was something we did for a charity called Global Care. Now, Global Care, we raised a lot of money. We raised about £1,500, which was your generosity, which, which was amazing. And Global Care was, you know, just amazed by it. So we're going to do another sponsor for them. This is something we're going to walk around while well, part of Grafham Water. We're going to push a sack barrow with gallons of water on it to try and highlight that a lot of children around the world have to walk miles to get clean water. Um, what Global Care will do is they have an emergency fund 
They'll provide those families with food so that their children do not have and water, so they do not have to walk those miles and could get into school because their big um, global care are all about educating children in the poorest areas. So um, we've, we're going to do this on the 25th of September. Um, all the information is on our mission board as you come through the, into the door. There are also little slips if you'd like to donate. Um, you can tear that off. That gives you all the information of how to go onto the Just Giving page. Um, and we'll have lots of photographs to show you afterwards of everyone pushing this sack barrow around. I hope it doesn't pour with rain all day because that'll make it doubly difficult, but you'll do it, you'll do it. Um, we're just going to show you, and, and we've also decided this year to, um, as a youth, to take on Global Care as our charity. So I think it's important that we start to understand that it's about giving out, not just taking in. So we'd just like to show a short video, one more, one last one, just to show you why we think this charity is important for us to support. Well, wasn't that wonderful? What a great service we've had this morning. We are um, starting to draw things to a close now, but we have uh, one more song from the band, which I'm really looking forward to. And while the bands play, uh, there's going to be a collection, so please give generously if you can. Over to you. Please stand. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Please do take your seats. We've come to the time near the end of our service called 24-7, life 24-7, because the life of God's church never stops. 
So this is a time where we share some news about the community and life of the church in this tiny part of God's kingdom. On Thursday, 8th of, Dece- uh, 8th of September, we have Betty Rose's funeral coming up. That's 8th of September. It's here in church at noon, at 12 noon. Everybody is welcome. So if you'd like to come, that's 8th of September, Thursday, at 12 noon. Yesterday, there was a women's cake and fellowship morning. So thank you very much to all of the people who volunteered to help with the running of that. This church thrives and survives on volunteers. So thank you to you all. We have, we have this evening starting for the first time. We're doing something new. Starting this evening is a new monthly service. It starts here at quarter past six with refreshments from six o'clock. And it's a service, a music-led service of worship and praise. And what we're hoping to do as we move forward with this new service in the months ahead is capture some of the energy that we've had here this morning from this morning's service. Many people worship God and really connect um, to God through liturgy and words, and others connect through the, vibrant, uh, through the vibrancy of music. And if that is you, this new service will be for you. So please do come this evening at six o'clock. And I have nearly, nearly forgotten something. And um, because this very, very important tin over here It's the first Sunday of the month, which means it's birthday Sunday. So in this tin, I'm sure many of you know, but if you're you're new here for the first time, there are lots and lots of chocolates. So if it's your birthday today, or this month ahead, in the month ahead, or you missed your chocolate from last month, then please make sure you see me before you leave here today for your yummy chocolate. And I think for everyone whose birthday it is, the band is going to help us all sing happy birthday. So let's sing happy birthday. She thought she got away with it. I've been put up to it by your dad. It is your birthday today, isn't it, Sarah? Yes, yes. Yeah. Happy birthday. You can be the first one to have a trip. So as we come to the end of our service today, I hope you all have a great day. I hope to see some of you here this evening. Uh, and if I don't see you beforehand, I hope you have a great day week ahead. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us all, always. Amen. Have a great day.